Welcome to Crypto Live. So here is an update on the SEC versus XRP lawsuit, and Ripple has had enough with the SEC and has just got a huge attack at the SEC. Also, could it go as high as $1,000? So don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on our upcoming videos about cryptocurrencies. James Fillon's tweet has provided a little insight into the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit. It has just been announced that the Ripple side will be asking for more space from the SEC in its motion to compel. As part of Ripple's request, the SEC must produce documents proving that the employees were permitted to trade XRP and any other digital assets that they may hold. As a matter of fact, it appears the document that has just come out has raised some questions as to what the SEC involves. Apparently, the SEC is not allowed to trade a lot of things internally. However, Ripple Camp believes that the SEC has, since they didn't give them a clearance until around 2018 about XRP, Bitcoin, Ether, and other cryptocurrencies. Also, Ripple wants to know exactly what the details are regarding whether or not the SEC employees are now able to trade XRP, as well as whether the possibility was actually available for 2018 and forward. As an additional demand, Ripple specifically requests anonymized documents reflecting trade pre-clearance decisions for XRP, Bitcoin, and Ether, as well as aggregated information related to those transactions. Further, defendants seek certifications concerning the XRP holdings of SEC employees, but either redacting personal information or releasing aggregate data. The document also states that they met with the SEC to confirm the issue on multiple occasions in July without making progress, since the SEC has allegedly requested that defendants respond to the letter motion within five business days from the date it was filed. Moreover, the court granted defendants' motion in June 2021 to compel the SEC to produce its trading policies concerning digital assets, and it found that defendants' request met the relevancy standard. Therefore, the SEC produced to defendants a policy entitled Ethics Guidance regarding digital assets. Moreover, SEC employees were not restricted from trading digital assets thanks to no policy of the SEC prohibiting such activity. So that likely meant that at that point, Ripple XRP were regarded as non-security assets, or at least not against the law. The SEC did not clarify anything regarding the cryptocurrencies, which is why everyone can trade it. And honestly, it seems a little strange from this perspective on top of these things. And it seems that everything that is not properly regulated cannot be traded by SEC members because it could be illegal. SEC employees, however, have had a long-standing policy stated in this little number that prevents them from engaging in security transactions without pre-approval. As of January 2018, the SEC's only policy on digital currencies related to its employees was the 2014 policy pertaining to a Bitcoin working group within the SEC. Consequently, from 2013 until 2018, the SEC employees were free to buy, sell, and hold XRP without restrictions by the SEC. So my opinion is that they were free to buy, sell, and hold XRP at all times. And the way Ripple did this was smart. They attacked a really specific point that is really going to be big because the fact that the SEC members could trade it until 2018 honestly makes it sound like it wasn't a security until 2018 at the very least. There is, however, another argument for that as well, in that most cryptocurrency projects are actually a form of security up to a certain point, like Ethereum. But at the moment, there's essentially a discussion about that, and it's kind of confusing. But I think the motion is very valid, and it's a nice thing to do by Ripple. Also, as a basic question for a motion, Ripple is basically requesting a local rule conference, which means they're requesting to start discussing back and forth right now. Also, in my limited understanding, this is not even the final case, as they have requested for a local rural conference. Now the SEC will act on it, then Ripple will apply, and then the SEC will respond. Most importantly, this evidence gives strong support to the defendant's defense and undermines the SEC's assertions. And the current issue concerns the SEC's own employees not being restricted from buying or selling XRP despite its long-going regulation that prohibits them from carrying out security-related transactions without pre-approval. Unless the SEC had decided to conclude by some time after January 2018, sales and offers of XRPs were not securities transactions, according to this document. 
Just for what it's worth, they're basically talking about how security is created. It is because crypto, as we know, can sometimes be regarded as a security from the get-go because it's based on consensus. So that can change. For example, if Ethereum were to begin again, they would have a pre-sale, which is bad. They had a kind of centralized little system at the beginning, which would have been better if they had had no pre-sales. As for Ripple, at first it had a fairly centralized system with no pre-sale, but that has changed greatly in 2017, and there has been a huge shift. So the question that arises here is whether or not they had no longer thought it was a security by 2018, or if they didn't have the authority to say so, but at that point, XRP was certainly decentralized enough that it didn't qualify as a security. Consequently, the logic that the SEC's pre-clearance requirement began on August 19, 2010 undermines the SEC's contentions that individual defendants failed to determine that their XRP offers and sales were securities as early as 2013. And the way I see it, the argument is now irretrievably settled for Ripple, and no way in the world is Ripple going to lose it. Do you agree with this? Please let us know your thoughts by leaving some comments below. In addition, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson's lawsuit against them will not be thrown out. And the fact that Ripple discovered that was the case, by the way, makes me think it has won. Basically, this lawsuit is three-party. One is against Ripple, one is against Bank on the House, and one is against Larson. Nevertheless, many believers believe two-thirds of this case will be resolved. The only problem is that it's not the biggest part of the case that we're looking forward to. XRP's status being a hot topic has to do more with whether or not the people we know, like the founder and CEO, are responsible. But this is nice for them, and it is nice to hear, but it does not concern us as much, but this information here could be critical for Ripple's fair notice defense. The fact that the SEC itself had not decided that XRP sales or offers constituted a securities transaction is again critical. There is clear evidence that the market participants were not given a fair warning that XRP would later be included in the security. Despite there being recognition that digital assets could be subject to the SEC's prohibition against security deals, the January 2018 policy does not declare all digital assets securities, nor specify which digital assets are securities. It is because according to the SEC, January 2018's policy appears to have been the first time in which digital assets were included in this regard, although digital asset transactions were left to the pre-clearance process for determination. As a result of this, from 2010, there were basically rules established. However, it is only since 2018 that this policy has included crypto in some capacity, although it is not all cryptos that are now forbidden. In this case, the members of SEC would have to approve the trade of crypto-encrypted assets on an individual basis. Additionally, because the SEC has refused to provide the preclearance documents, which are SEC internals, defendants cannot determine whether the SEC prohibited or allowed transactions in XRP, Bitcoin, or Ether. Which makes me wonder why they would not provide that, since they should know about it if they were providing it on their end. As for theoretically correct, if the SEC had given some thought to XRP and if SEC members could trade it, that might seem right, theoretically. As a result, I believe Ripple's case needs more details. Other remarks by the SEC also demonstrate the need for additional information. With these, it is clear that there is more information that will be released in the future regarding this lawsuit, and it is clear from the facts that the SEC suit is really like a ploy, so once the current storm passes, XRP has a real chance to reach $1,000. That's all for this video about crypto, and thank you for watching. If you would like to receive updates on the crypto market, make sure you click the subscribe and bell button.